My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. This video will be the follow-up to the previous one where we started to implement the fire rod. So far our fire rod is able to create some fire entity that will move and yeah we are not done because actually it, it doesn't work yet on torches um, and that's because torches are configured to be traversable by nothing so that's kind of bad. <laughs> we said in the torch script set traversable by nothing um, with this syntax here with only one parameter it means that it will apply to all types of entities so yeah if you look at the documentation set traversable by the first parameter is optional but uh, it's the type of entity that you want to configure and if you miss if you um, omit it then this will apply to all types of entities so no one can traverse a torch for this reason not the hero not uh, the the enemies not the, the the fire and so on so what we can do is we, we can still keep this line here but add another similar one to uh, add a specific rule for well, not for torch because torch is not, I mean, not fire because fire is not uh, an entity type. Um, the type of entity is custom entity. Remember, our fire is, is a custom entity model here. So we should say that custom entities, so should they be able or not to traverse the torch? Well, and the, uh, the response to that is actually it depends. If our custom entity is some fire, then yes. Otherwise, well, 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 uh, no. <laughs> so how do we do that? Actually, the traversable parameter can be a boolean, but it can also be a function. And that function allows to decide dyna dynamically based on more exactly what custom entity is trying to, to traverse the torch. So we can pass a function and the documentation explains that the first parameter is um, the entity that is trying, that is being traversed. So in our case, the torch. And the second one is whatever custom entity is trying to, to get through us, to get through our torch. So for now, the only thing we know is that other is a custom entity because here we filtered by type uh, custom entity but yeah this function will be called with these two parameters and well if the the model of the other custom entity is a torch no is fire sorry then we return true we return that we allow fire to traverse the torch and in all, in any other case, we return false. Okay, let's try that. Yeah, it works, but it feels weird that the fire is able to traverse the torches. It feels even weirder when they are already turned on. Um, but to fix that, it's, it's quite easy if we go back to our fire script because this is where we um, turn we detect torches to uh, turn them on. We can stop the movement here if the custom uh, if the um, if the fire reaches a torch. So we can say fire st stop movement. And it doesn't depend on whether the torch was just turned on or not. We want to just stop the fire when when it is overlapping a torch. And actually we also want that when we are hurting an enemy. Okay, cool. It works. Does it work as expected on our enemy here? Yes. The fire is, is stopping. 
Um, okay. I should mention that um, this particular sprite collision test uh, currently has a small bug. Um, our fire, I mean, if you are too close to the torch, it will not work, which is bad, of course. <laughs> And yeah, this is a small bug due to the fact that um, our uh, this particular collision here will only be detected when the frame of the fire changes. So if it was a sprite that animates uh, quicker than that, it would be detected, or if the movement was slower. Um, but to fix it, just so you know, you you could reverse the the collision test here and put it in torch. You could do uh, the same stuff, but in the torch script. Like here, we are in the torch script. So um, add collision test. We would do the same, except that here it's the torch that that is the first one, and the fire that will be the other. And well, actually, we can pretty much copy paste all of this. So we keep the case of enemy here because this works as expected but we will move the collision test from the fire script to the torch script and we, we reverse it. So we call add collision test no longer on fire but on the torch and it means that when the torch detects a custom entity and that custom entity is so this time fire um, if the torch is unlit we turn it on and we stop the movement of the fire but the fire is called other here okay uh, maybe you you didn't encounter this bug if your movement has a different speed of if your sprite animation has a different a different uh, speed or if the bug is already fixed by the time you you follow this tutorial because we will fix it in in the next version so here I, I no longer have this problem Um, anyway, this was not the main topic of the, the tutorial. Um, something else that would be cool, because you know, our uh, fire currently cannot uh, traverse these little walls here. But it would be cool that it, that it uh, could, because actually these are low walls. They are they have a specific ground type that is called low wall and this allows projectiles to to traverse them you know i was just able to um to throw a, a vase here ab above the low wall so why wouldn't we um, put two torches like here that would be linked to this door, so door B, like that, and put a, a treasure chest here. I don't know what's inside. Okay, a quiver, cool. Um, and the enemy will no longer be linked to, to that door. So, yeah, we want the fire to be able to to traverse low walls. So how do we do that? Our low walls here are just regular standard tile that are configured with the ground type called low wall, but that doesn't allow fi fire to, to pass because the engine doesn't know that we want fire to, to traverse low walls. It knows that vases, I mean destruct destructible objects when they are thrown, they can uh, indeed traverse low walls. If you look at the tile set of this map, these little barriers here are indeed of uh, ground low wall. So 
it's possible indeed to um, configure your entity, your custom entities to uh, and to specify if they can if you want them to be able to traverse some kind of ground. Um, so this is the getter, but this is a setter. Okay, let's go. Let's use set can traverse ground with the fire entity. Um, so the fire entity set can traverse ground, low wall, and just true. And that should be enough. Yay! It works. So yeah, basically you can um, configure your your entity, your custom entities, um, with multiple uh, functions to to say can they traverse uh, this or th or that? Can they traverse some specific type of ground, or can they traverse um, some types of entities? using this one set can traverse or can they be can they be traversed by other types of entities um, so it's quite quite powerful there are there are still some some bugs as you as I showed you um, in in this tutorial but um, yeah we are trying to to fix them. <laughs> But hopefully you you will be able to to do um, very powerful things already with with custom entities. So as a summary, you mainly have these ones set traversable by set can traverse and set can traverse ground to configure these. Um, traversable rules okay um, I hope this was helpful um, and don't hesitate to join our discord to ask questions um, and I think we will continue to make more tutorials about custom entities thank you all for watching and I will see you next time bye <laughs>